Okay, now Carlson's game was the funniest of the of the event. Hey, okay. I can't believe I found that move. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> now, uh, Carlson played in an insulting way to his opponent, like. I'm going to play bad on purpose, get a funky position, and then I'll win because you're no good. And Irigasi's having a bad tournament, and Magnus has to win um, if he wants to try to get first place because Abdus Satorov lost. So if Giri had drawn or lost, either one, and Magnus wins this game and Abdus Satorov lost, which he did, then Magnus ties for first. So Magnus needs to win this game to have a chance of tying for first. Unfortunately for Magnus, Geary won, so no chance. Yeah, this game was very funky. Uh, okay, so let's have a look. Okay, Magnus played a very strange move on move two, played b6. That's very uncommon. Of course, white could play d4 and c4. But okay, we can get to some queens, queens Indian. This should be seven. G6, the double fianchetto, giving white the center. And he takes the center. So Magnus is just playing weird and unusual because get Irigasi out of his prep and just try to outplay him. Even though it gives white an advantage, obviously. White has a nice position here. It's a very blockaded position where white has a lot more space on the queen side and center. Okay, and then play bishop c8, which is the bishop isn't really doing anything here. And, you know, white, black's going to play like a king's Indian because it looks like a king's Indian now, and black's going to play for f5. And he plays knight e8, so he can play f5. And he plays f5. Okay, and then white never plays f3, so now you know the result of the game. The engine doesn't like the move f3, actually. But it already says that black is doing fine. It doesn't like that white gave black this nice knight on c5, which can't be kicked away. And black's position just looks like a king's Indian, except the knight on c5 is just sitting there looking nice. Okay, he played f4, a3, g5. The engine doesn't like that. It wants to play a4, um, which I understand. Uh, because after, after b4, you can play knight, might b3, and get your knight to d4. a4 is a pawn sacrifice, and there's no reason really to, to do that now. So he just played g5 on the king side. b4, knight b7, g4. So Irigasi is trying to close up the king side and advance on the queen side. He put it in h, and then h3. Rook f7, typical move in the king's Indian. It defends c7 in case the c-file gets open. The bishop can go to f8 and defend d6. And the rook can go to h7 and open the h-file, is the, is the idea of rook, f, rook to uh, f7. Also, sometimes the knight goes to f8 if this knight could get to f8. And then knight g6, knight h4 is an idea. Okay, so he played king f2. He decided if the king's side gets open, I'm going to run my king over to the queen side. Um, engine doesn't approve of that, but it's okay. But okay. Okay, so nothing happens, nothing happens. And this is my favorite position of the game because he's set up for the next game. <laughs> All these pieces, and the engine says it's about equal because both sides can't really do very much. It's sort of closed on everywhere. Okay. Hey, Charlotte Chess Center, how's it going? Nothing's happening, nothing's happening. Niroditsky's happy because it's a King's Indian type of position. <laughs> okay, Magnus decides to open up the queen's side first. Then he opens, so he opened up both rook files. The engine still says it's equal. And rook a1 it doesn't like. And then rook h2 check it doesn't like. It doesn't like what Magnus is doing. It doesn't like trading all the rooks. Okay, and in this position, funnily enough, it prefers knight takes to king takes. And the reason Magnus, Magnus traded all the rooks was to play the next move. And practically, this is really good for black. If two engines are playing, it's probably a draw. 
if two humans are playing, it's very good for black. And the crowd has been waiting 30 moves for this to happen. Sacking on g4 <laughs> and getting the two passed pawns. Okay, so white's up a piece, but what are white's pieces doing? But black has these two connected passed pawns, so they're, they're going to do something. And the question is, how does white activate his pieces? So the funny thing is, the engine wants to put this knight here. I guess because then the other knight could go here later. So it wants to play knight a7, then knight to c6. Okay, but he played bishop f3. Never play bishop f3. Bishop h3. The engine says this position is equal, but okay, it's very unlikely to be a draw. Bishop h5 is a good move. g4 is good. Knight e2 is good. The engine likes all these moves. Always play bishop f1. Queen d1. Bishop g2 attacking the e4 pawn. Bishop g6 defending it. Knight g5 attacking it again. Knight c3. Bishop f3. And to me, this just seems good for black because I have these two passed pawns. The extra piece for white doesn't seem like it means anything to me. I don't see how that's important. This move is a big mistake, it says. And now he can come in on the h file. And if I was playing this game, I would just assume the last, ever since the peace sack, that black would win. If I was black, I'd be really happy. If I was white, I'd be like, ah. Because I don't have anything to do. And white, black is going to queen his pawns. Also, I'm stuck defending this pawn because my f3 pawn is gone. So white's pieces are stuck defending it. This knight has nowhere to go. The bishop has nowhere to go. So there's just nothing for white to do. So he sacks a piece back, trying to activate. Now it's equal material, but he got rid of the passed pawn. Now white has something to do. So I think practically that was a good decision, sacking the piece back. Queen c1, knife f7. He goes for the c pawn. Now he comes in this way. If you take the pawn on c7, this bishop controls a1. So we have forced checkmate. Check. Queen a2 check or queen c3 check. Doesn't matter. The, the, if the king goes here, we have mate in one. So he didn't take on c7. He played e5, blocking the bishop from a1. Pawn takes, bishop d2. Attacking the bishop on f5. And they plays queen h8, I like that. I like that Magnus plays queen a and queen h8. Now black is winning by material and has two passed pawns. So he's just trying to stop white's queen from getting in. That's why he played queen h8. If you take, I can take either way. And then queen h1 trades queens and I win the bishop ending easily. E4, opening up this diagonal again. Queen h2, wants to play queen e5, threatening the bishop and in here. Queen e2, gonna play queen e5 too. And then check, and then white resign because white's getting checkmated. If he plays queen here, queen c2, then many moves win. Queen a3 is forced mate because of this mate. And it announces mate here. It's playing moves like bishop check and bishop d4, giving the bishop way to, to have a slower mate. This is the only move that makes any sense to me as a human. But it's going to be mate. The truth hurts. And this is checkmate. It's a funny checkmate. So after queen d3 check, he resigned. After king here, the quickest checkmate is bishop d1, threatening queen b3 mate. Oh, that was an interesting mm -hmm. game. That was really interesting It was, game. yeah. And unfortunately for Magnus, Giri won. So Magnus tied for second with Abdus Sitarov. And also unfortunate for Magnus, they do tie breaks. I don't know what the tie breaks mean. I don't know if it means he gets less money. I don't know. But Abdus Sitarov technically is second and Magnus is third. In the U.S., they just tie for second. But they do tie breaks in Europe, and somebody comes in second, somebody third. I don't know if Abdus Sitarov got second place money, and Magnus gets third, or they share it. If they share it, I don't see what, why somebody's second and somebody's third when they tied. So. Mm -hmm. so those were the important decisive games. Uh, in